Well, the battle over this so-called late-term abortion ban in the Iowa legislature continues, except today I have not come to bury HF5, but to praise it. I haven't really changed my opinion on it. I still think it is a morally very flawed piece of legislation whose intentions are honorable, but I fear it will make the matter it's trying to solve worse and not better. But, you know, we've discussed that quite a bit up to this point, and I'm sure when we wrap up the 2011 legislative session here at SteveDace.com, we'll explain it again in greater detail. But for now, I want to give the devil his due in this case. And that is that this so-called late-term abortion ban has managed to do something that heretofore we've not seen in Iowa in the last several years. And that is, this partial birth or late-term abortion ban has put Senate Majority Leader Mike Gronstall, who's pretty much been the potentate of Iowa, the governor of Iowa since the 2006 sweeping election victory here for Democrats, it has put Mike Gronstall on the defensive with his own mayor, with his own caucus, with the media. And this is something we haven't seen in quite some time. And I believe there's two lessons to be learned about this. And if you share my problematic concern about this late-term abortion ban, or whether you think, you know, listen, I'm, I'm being unrealistic as a pro-lifer and we should take what we should get. Here's one thing I think we can agree on that it's a good thing to see Mike Gronstall on the defensive. And I think there's two reasons for that. Number one, because Democrats are feeling the pressure, at least a few of them in very winnable districts for Republicans, in the 2012 election cycle. And if nobody cared about social issues, then this wouldn't be the issue that would make them sweat. And I think the lesson here also is that if they can go against Mike Gronstall, on even a late-term abortion ban, whether it will actually ban any abortions or not, then they also, for the last few years, could have gone against Mike Gronstall for the Iowa Marriage Amendment. And that's something that we should not forget in the 2012 election cycle. We should thank these Democrats that have stood up, the two or three of them that have stood up and said, hey, even for a flawed bill like this, I'll, I'll make some attempt to publicly stand up for life. Thank them. And then properly eject them from the state Senate because they didn't stand up for marriage for the last three years when they had the chance to do so. That's lesson number one. And lesson number two is, if just standing up for your principles, even in a morally confused, haphazard sort of way, as this so-called late-term abortion ban, if just standing up, just standing up as you are for this late-term abortion ban causes the left to play defense then my question is, you know, what happens when we really stand up for our principles? I mean, if just doing something that you really can't even explain as being biblically or constitutionally righteous, but whose intentions are to at least stop the bleeding, bad pun intended, stop the bleeding from a pro-life perspective, if even doing that, if even doing that puts the left on the defensive, then what would happen if we actually stood up for our core principles again? What would we do to them then? Because we haven't done that for a generation. We've been content to just take, essentially, the droppings, the table scraps that the left was willing to provide us, and then say, hey, half a loaf is better than none. It just doesn't matter if that loaf is infested with maggots or not. And to me, that's where I would grow some confidence from this. Something like House File 5, as morally confused as it is, as much dissension as it's caused amongst its own pro-life brethren as it has, something as morally confusing and problematic as this bill is enough to put the left on the defensive. Well, what would happen if we actually stood up for inalienable rights? What would happen if we actually stood up for righteousness and actually stood up for the vision of our founding fathers again? And if this bill has accomplished nothing else, at least it has demonstrated to us that the left is not some impenetrable fortress, but rather, this hasn't been a war at all, because it takes two to tango, and when one side doesn't fight, the other side just simply wins by default. Thanks for joining us here today at SteveDace.com. If you want to email me, please feel free to do so at Steve at SteveDace.com. You can also follow me on Facebook at Stephen Dace, Twitter, Steve underscore Dace is how you can find us there. 
We'll see you tomorrow. God bless.